Hi, I'm Cecilia. Welcome to today's conversation of faith. For more of me, find me on my Facebook, my Instagram, my LinkedIn, and also my website. With them, you'll know more of who I am and what I stand for. In today's conversation of faith, we're going to talk about being a visionary, someone who dreams a better life or a better future for themselves. Because I also will consider myself to be a visionary because I consider what I am doing to grow into larger scales, into more heights and into further depths than what it is right now. And because of that, I thought it well to speak about it today. And what does it mean to be a visionary or to someone who dreams who's a dreamer that is uh it's like wanting to or desiring more than what you actually have at the moment it's not only monetary terms but also in stature in class or in every any other aspect of your life even in ministry you know there is that you just do not want to dwell in this one particular place you want to uh, go in further or go into further places that is being a vision and trying envisioning something larger and better than what you have right now and uh, it's like dreaming of a better life ahead in the future and taking actions to pursue it. So it's not just about wealth and money and acquiring, but it also it can involve ministry, family, uh, career. You know, you want to go to uh, scale the heights of your career. It could be in terms of projects, in terms of your ministry or your work amongst the community, or it could be in the NGO that you want to start. No, there's always much more that we want to, we envision to go further and broader and uh, higher. And it is not always about money, but yes. So today we're going to talk about being a visionary and we're going to look firstly at the case of one man who went to the prophet of God and wanted, like he was, uh, he was envisioning a better a country for himself. He was the king of Israel. He wanted a better country for himself because at that moment, Israel had been oppressed by the nations around them. And he was like, now what will happen to us? You know, we are being surrounded by armies uh, each and every time. We are always on war. We are always fighting because of uh, the enemies that are against us. So what can we do? And the man of God gave him one task to do. We read that from the book of Second Kings. This man of God was Elisha and the king was Joash. And we are told that now when Elisha had fallen sick with the illness of which he was to die, Joash, king of Israel, went down to him and wept before him, crying, My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. Because they had now by this time been oppressed by their enemies or by the armies of those kingdoms that wanted to overtake them. And Elisha said to him, take a bow and arrows. So he took a bow and arrows. Then he said to the king of Israel, draw the bow. And he drew it and Elisha laid his hands on the king's hand. And he said, open the window eastward. And he opened it. Then Elisha said, shoot. And he shot and he said, the Lord's arrow of victory, the arrow of victory over Syria for you. We shall fight the Syrians in Africa until you have made an end of them. So we can see this king had a vision of how much he, of how uh, he wanted to defeat uh, the armies of Syria because they were oppressing them, and also of how he wanted peace for the land of uh, for the land of Israel so that they will enjoy peace at least, not always fighting and fighting and fighting against their enemies. He wanted victory over them, so he envisioned a better future or a peaceful future for his nation Israel. And he went to the prophet of God. The prophet told him, "This is how you're going to do it." And he gave him like a sign of him shooting the arrow, telling him that when you shoot it, it's like you are shooting the arrow of God, and that is how you're going to defeat the army of Syria. And also he said take the arrows and he took them and he said to the king of Israel, strike the ground with them and he struck three times and stopped. Then the man of God was angry with him and said, you should have struck five or six times. Then you would have struck down Syria until you had made an end of it. But now you will strike down Syria only three times. So he was given the opportunity to envision a better future for him and his his nation. Like he was given the free well, the free will to strike as many times as he would want, but he only did it three times and and left it. You know, he was not given a limit of how how much arrows he should strike down, but he only struck the. And the man of God was angry with him. He was like, "Why have you only done three times? There are so many arrows left. You could have done like five or six times, but then you will have defeated the whole army of Syria. But you only done three, so you only defeat them three times, and that that's it because that is the." father you could have seen and the father you could have envisioned for yourself because sometimes it is not that god has not given us 
um, the opportunity to dream big or to go higher or to scale higher it is because us ourselves limit ourselves to thinking that i think only this much uh ground i can cover this is the only much ground i can cover i think i think i can only walk to two miles or i can only go as far as 10 kilometers i cannot go further or we think that i can only go as far as building a small town home a small machinette for my family and that's it you could dream as i think my uh, organization can only go as far as this area no no further it will not go like uh worldwide it cannot go like uh in three or four countries you only think of this one country you can think of further and for that is being a vision thinking further but you only limit it to a specific uh place because you think that this is how far god can take me but god has given us all that there is like he owns all of it all the riches of this world belongs to god there are thousand cattle on the hills and all the precious stones they all belong to god and he he's willing to give it all to us not because of our greed or because of to have stature but because of his glory and because of what we we'll use with what he has given to us so ask and it will be given to you seek and you will find knock and the door will be open there is no limit to how much you can seek how much you can ask and how how much you can knock god is ready and is willing so we learn from this king of israel called joash that he did not go as far as he would have gone because of how he limited himself and also you can see from this story that it is good to envision a better future for for yourself or for whatever it is that you're working for and want it to grow bigger as this King of Israel wanted it to grow bigger, but also him, he limited his how big he will grow because of how much faith or how much um, arrows he had struck to the crown. And yeah, he was told that he will only defeat Syria, the Syrians three times and after that they will still oppress them. And we continue reading from Second Kings um, and see how it went. And to Second Kings chapter 13 from verses 14 all the way to 19 that I've read. And... Um, as I have said, yes, money is involved because for you to grow, you need money for investments, you need money to scale, you need money for this, you need money for that. As Ecclesiastes will tell us in, in Ecclesiastes 10, 19, that money answers everything. So we cannot say that, we cannot try to be pious and petty and think that, ah, as we are men of God, we are people of God, we do not need money, we only need God, but as long as we are in this world, we live with the economy and the currency of this world. And the currency of this world is money. So yes, money is part of it, but money is not the drive to it. The drive is the, the scale you want to go, the vision you have, what is it that you want to accomplish? Does it suit your purpose for your life? Does it suit the purpose that God has given to you? If God has given you the gift to minister to his people, to practice hospitality, and you want to, to scale it further, then you need money to do that further thing. But if you do not... If you think that it will fall from heaven, that then woe is you because in this world, money answers everything. You know, it says to in verse um, 10, verse 19, bread is made for laughter and wine gladness life and money answers everything. Ecclesiastes 10, 19, because that is true. So being a visionary involves money. It involves uh, having uh, the capabilities to scale higher or to go higher but also it does not only involve man involve money as much as we do um acknowledge the fact that yes money is needed and also it does not involve acquiring more and making more but it does not include greediness and panting after money as i've said the way uh first timothy 6 will warn us that godliness with contentment is great gain for we brought not, nothing into this world and will take nothing away from this world as jesus told of this parable of this man who had plenty of harvest and he thought he would bring down these old ones and build big new ones so that he might store all of them and he would just see live and be merry and drink and enjoy his life because he had all that he needed for the rest of his life probably you know that is what most people who want to gather more or to scale higher have in mind thinking that i will have this much and it will sit in a store and i'll be able not to sit and live and relax and enjoy life to the fullest but that is not the aim of what of why god gives us we know from the children god says that he is the one who gives us the power to accumulate wealth so that we do not forget that it is god who gives us the strength to accumulate wealth and all that he gives us so that we can share with with one another so that we can build up the kingdom of god so we can build up um the needs 
or to uh, uh, to meet the needs of those around us and also to help with um the various things that that people around us need so that it is not just for us to acquire and gain more and have more and just sit now and gladly eat and enjoy the produce of your land or the fruits of your labor but understanding that godliness with contentment is great gain so that in whichever stage you are in even being a dreamer and you are still want to you desire more and um want to scale more but understanding even in the state that you are in it is good also to be content because godliness with contentment is great gain and also we know that um if we love money and we are driven because of our greediness it will lead us to you be involved in all kinds of evil we also read that from second timothy because people who seek after money who pant after money they end up involving themselves in all kinds of evil things to gain that money so we end up losing our, our values losing our principles and forsaking god even even forsaking god himself to pursue and want to gain much and much more we can see that even in our economy that we live right now in the whatever part of the world you are in how people who will do anything and everything just to earn more money not that they need that money they just want to accumulate and accumulate to i think in their psychology if they have more in the bank they will be more at rest but actually because you are stealing that money and you're using corrupt means to gain that money you will never completely have rest you'll always be cautious and because the thing about greediness it always wants more you will never satisfied by enough the more you have in the bank that you are not even using the more you still you want to earn and get and get and get and get using um scrupulous ways or means to gain that money so that those who um fall into the love of money who are ensnared with the love of money find themselves even corrupting their own lives or their own families just to gain that money and it leads to all kinds of evil lack of values and also principles because you will lose your values you lose your principles just seeking and asking after the money and also uh the thing about being a visionary is that it involves change because you want to grow and you want to increase in whatever stature that you are in right now so it will involve you to also learn how to change learn how to adapt learn how to pivot learn how to um think in a different way these all involve in being a visionary you do not do the same things over and over and gain and expect different results that cannot happen because even we are told that um it is said that insanity is doing the same thing over and over and gain and expecting a different result but if you want to be if you are a visionary you want to scale higher you cannot just be saying and doing the same things thinking that out of it something big that you're thinking about will come up no it will not it does not happen that way not in this world only in in where <laughs> Only in Disney, probably that is what happens. But in the real world, it does not happen like that. You have to change the way you do things. You have to change the way you think. You have to change the way you approach situations. You have to change the way um, you perceive things. All of that needs change is needed for someone who is a visionary to accomplish or to reach the visions that they have. And we read that um, also in Proverbs 22 that desire without knowledge does not help anyone. You know, the writer of Proverbs... Um, who is uh king solomon he says also in 19 verse 2 proverbs 19 verse 2 desire without knowledge is not good and whoever makes haste with his feet misses his way so in terms of change you have to have knowledge of how you are going to scale so have a plan have uh written down steps of how you want to achieve like you have this whole goal ahead of you but how do you plan on how to reach it because if you just have it if you just say it if you just desire it and don't do nothing about it continue on with the day-to-day -day life as normal it will not be able to come to fruition you will not see yourself accomplishing it you will figure out 10 years later why am i still in the same place in the same in the same job doing the same thing because you desired but you never made plan for it like he tells us knowledge is required you need to knowledge and the knowledge comes understanding and understanding comes wisdom and wisdom is application of the understanding that you have from that knowledge so that you do not just dream of something but you also act or work towards it and working involves a lot of change and a lot of learning and a lot of 
uncomfortable things that you will need to do. Not uncomfortable in the way of sinning or doing evil things, but uncomfortable in the way that you'll have to break the norm that you're used to. You have to break the, comf the comfort that you are used to for you to attain that higher height that you want to attain. So, yeah, so learn to apply knowledge in the desires that you have. Think about what you're going to do. Plan on it. Learn, um, of, learn and acquire knowledge that you need to learn if it's from other people. Because at times we think that we know everything, that we are experts of what we do. But actually to scale higher, you need someone else to give you a different perspective that you do not already have to help you and um, to help you gain into that higher state. And we can also th know that it involves, it could be change of family, like moving to a different place away from your family. It could be the change of friends, you know, changing your friend group into other friend group because the ones you have are used to you how you are and they're used to, like you speak about the same things but if you want to go somewhere else you need people who are already there or who are going there to help you to elevate you to that place that you are going so you might change friendships you might change colleagues you will probably need to leave that job and go to another job but it involves a lot of change and also it is scary and very demanding and it requires resilience because scaling higher you know being a visionary and wanting to accomplish that vision it is not easy you need resilience because a lot of things will come up against your dreams or against your vision and you will need a strong um a strong spirit to be able to withstand it all you need a strong uh, mind to be able to withstand it all that is why most people do not make change that is why most people will always die still dreaming and still envisioning a better future for themselves because they never understood that it is very demanding to be a visionary. It is not, it will not just fall from heaven. At times for us Christians, we have fallen into the aspect of wanting miracles to happen from God, wanting the manner, like the same way it happened in uh, the Israelites as well, moving from Egypt to Canaan for, ma for God to uh, reign on us, manna, and cause quail to come uh, to us and so that we'll just live and do nothing and everything that we need will will fall on us but that is not the way we happen you know jesus told the disciples that this generation that he the generation that he was speaking to are very wicked because they only wanted signs and miracles that is the only thing they needed they followed jesus only for his miracles and the signs that he did they did not want to learn they did not want to acquire the knowledge they did not want to do something or to take themselves out of their comfort zone and actually practice something new because they only wanted miracles and that is mostly the same today with most church people or spiritual people we manifest we pray and we do nothing we just sit and wait for god to shower on us the blessings to shower on us the money shower on us the cast show on us the land shower on us the children the family that we desire but we do not apply our mind you know jesus told god about the two greatest commandments to love your god with all your heart with all your soul with all your mind your mind is required also in loving god so that we do not just expect things to be falling from heaven but you apply your mind you know mind in, involves knowledge it involves understanding it involves wisdom it involves asking and seeking that is where mind in well, that is what mind involves so that you will not just sit and wait for things to happen and wait for miracles to happen and wait for god to just you are just sitting at home waiting for god to heal you have prayed for healing then you just sit and wait Go to a doctor, seek for medication, go to a pharmacist, look for a med medication. You cannot just sit there and you're like, I want to go to master's and do my PhD and be a learned person. And we're just sitting there, you do not want to go to school, don't want to read. What will happen? You think they will just, those all, all those accolades will just come to you dropping from heaven. Or we just sit there and wait for your business to prosper and be big and open different branches. And you're just doing the same thing each and every day. You're not trying to improve your marketing. You're not trying to improve your sales strategies. You're not trying to improve probably the products that you are doing. You're not trying to research to see whether the products that you are producing, the people around you actually want to want want them or the, or the market that you are targeting or are desiring the kind of things, the produce that you are selling. You're not trying to apply any knowledge, just thinking that me, I'm going to do this and this is the only thing I'm doing and I'm expecting God to perform a miracle and all of a sudden I'll be all over Africa with my product. No, it doesn't happen like that. Mind is needed. You're loving God with all your mind. It forces you thinking and rethinking and doing things and changing things so that you are not expecting miracles to happen from nowhere or to happen from heaven because God is not about just performing miracles and performing miracles and performing miracles. It is making us lazy and Christianity is not about laziness. It is about working because Jesus himself said, I came 
not to be served but to serve and to give him his life as a ransom for many so don't expect to be served by god but be a servant yourself do your due diligence and do the work that you need to do for all that that you, you desire and envision to happen in your life to happen so they don't just fall from heaven and um yes you can also learn that yeah it is demanding and you needed to make change and also you need to be resilient and to be strong in your heart in your spirit and in your mind because at times being a visionary is only you who knows your vision is it's only you who believes it and it's only you who pictures it nobody else around you does it so that if you expect other people to encourage you to uh to push you forward they will not because they do not know what you know they do not have what you have so you need to have that strong spirit to be able to push yourself when no one else is pushing it because no one else can see what you you yourself are seeing because we see it with the eyes of in our of our hearts and the eyes of our minds not with our naked eye so that when you see a desert and you say me i'm visioning a very great city here and uh like a, a smart city here and people are looking at it they're seeing a dry land and expecting them to push you further to where you want to go it will be impossible it is very hard for them to envision what envisioning so learn to be resilient and strong another thing we can know is that being a visionary is informed or inspired by the word of god so that you are not just going it by your own strength but also understanding that it is applying also the strength that god gives you we can read that from proverbs um Proverbs 16 verse 3, it says, Commit your work to the Lord and your plans will be established. So that you're not doing it all by your own strength, by your own power. But understanding that God is the one who will help you establish those plans, all those desires, all those visions that you have for yourself. And also verse, verse 13 verse um, 22, he says, A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, but the sinner's wealth is laid up for the righteous. So that as a man of God, as a woman of God, as you envision it, you know that you're also doing it according to the word of God. Because it says here that a good man leaves wealth or inheritance for his children to the third and even fourth generation. Like, yes, yeah, so that you are leaving something for your children that will come after you. Even those that you'll probably never see, but they will learn of that great ancestor, <laughs> ancestor, <laughs> the great um, grandpa or grandma that we, we have never seen, but he is the one who or she is the one who started this this uh, family business, this family NGO, this, uh, or this NGO that we are running. He's the one who started this community uh, development project, and we're still doing it in these many years that have passed so that you are fueled by what the word of God says, living an inheritance. It is not only probably money in the bank, but what you have been able to do in the community that is left or passed on to their children, to their children, to their children. The same with Jesus Christ did not just leave his ministry. Uh, his ministry did not die when he left the world. He left it to the disciples. The disciples left it to their own disciples, which also had been passed on for, and for, for years has been passed on for many years, although it had undergone some trials and tribulations, but it still withstands to this point that even now I is um, able to speak of the faith, to speak of Jesus Christ, to speak of Christianity this way, because it was passed on from generation to generation. He did not just leave it uh, to himself, or he did not just go and it was disappeared, but he left it for people who were able to pass into other people who were able to pass into other people. As even Paul uh, tells Timothy that the death deposit that he has in himself, you should also pass it on to someone else so that someone else may be able to pass it on to another person. So that wealth, not only money, but whatever you stand for, let it be passed on from one person to another, to the third and fourth generation. So they know that my great great grandma cecilia was a woman of god and that is why i am able at this point to also be a man or a woman of god because of the deposit that she left for us as a family that would be my wish that is my wish for the future that is to come i don't know the end of it and also we can read also from ecclesiastes 2 verse 24 and 25 it says there is nothing better for a person than that he should eat and drink and find enjoyment in his toil this also i saw is from the heart of god for apart from him who can eat or who can have enjoyment so also understanding that it is good and it is very much okay and all right to enjoy the fruit of your labor as we envision a better future maybe right now you are in a place where you are suffering but you are in but you are envisioning a, a time that will come when you will be able to enjoy the fruits of your labor. And that is okay because we are told from here that it is God who gives us that 
um, opportunity to enjoy from our toil. You know, he should eat and drink and find enjoyment in his toil. This also is from the hand of God. God has blessed us with the good of what we have done. So enjoy it. And with that, it gives you this one uh, from the Bible gives you motivation to continue on envisioning a better future for yourself so that you will be able to enjoy the fruit of what you have done. And yeah, that too should be, this is how being a visionary should be inspired by the word of God. And also, what is the hope for a visionary like me? What can we hope for? What can we, what can we be encouraged by in the word of God? From Ecclesiastes 3 verse 11, we are told, He has made everything beautiful in its time, God. Also, he has put eternity into a man's heart, yet so that he cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. So God is the one who makes everything beautiful in its time. So as you toil, as you labor, as you struggle, as you desire to build up, or you think that why is it taking so long for these things to happen? The same way most, most times I find myself thinking, why is it taking so long for David and Cecilia to grow? But he makes everything beautiful in its own time. And that is the hope that keeps me going. That in his time, I will see the roses, I will see the lilies, I will see the beautiful garden that I envision um, for my life. You know, that growth of David and Cecilia, the growth of my writing, the growth of my impact in the world, the growth of how I will encourage many other young believers to stand and stay strong. For the word of God, that is my aim and my vision to see many young people stand for the truth, stand for what is written in the word of God and live by the rules of the laws of God. Live like people who actually acknowledge God or Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And right now I cannot see it, but one day I'm sure I'll be able to see that and travel and see the course of the world. That is also part of what my dreams are right now. I am constricted in one particular place because I'm not able to travel far, but I know in one day, in God's timing, because his timing is beautiful, I'll be able to travel and see the world. And also we can learn from Ecclesiastes 9.11 that um, time and chance happened to, happens to us all. Like, we don't know uh, what time, it, what things will happen in what time. We don't know if this, what I'm doing today will be what will break through or what I will do tomorrow, which is what will break through. All what I did like months and months ago, it is what will break through. But from the word of God, time and chance happen to every one of us. So, and we do not know that time. We don't know that chance. We just do what we can do and see how God will cause what we have done to grow. And also in Ecclesiastes 11, 6, he says that, um, in the morning sow your seed, and at evening withhold not your hand, for you do not know which will prosper, this or that, or whether both alike will be good. So in your plannings, in your visions, in your um, efforts to do things, and you do this one, and you do this one, and you do this one, like you have invested in so many different things, or different things, do that. Like he tells us in Ecclesiastes 11, that we do not know which one will prosper. Like for me, I am doing diving in Sicilia, I'm doing study of Genesis, I'm doing conversion of faith, I'm uh, writing, you know, I am cooking, I have a cooking channel also. I do not know which one of them will prosper, or which one of them will uh, take me from the level that I am to another level. God only knows. But all I know is that um, one of them will work out, or maybe all of them will work out. In all, all <laughs> glory will go back to God. So take your chances. Do different things, as we are told in... 11 6 and hope that either one of them will ha will prosper or all of them will prosper because we don't know the answer to that but that is an encouragement for a visionary that not everything you're doing will uh come out but will not grow or will not develop but trusting god like pray for each one of them like i've started with commit your plans to the lord because you don't know and uh commit your plans to the lord and he will establish them so that you try this one and give it your all. Try something else and give it your all. Try any, anything else, give it your all. Like according to how much strength you have. Like if you can manage two, three things at the same time, good for you. Try them all. If you only can manage one, give it your all might. Give it the, all, um, give it the strength that you have and the knowledge and the wisdom that you have acquired. And give it to it because you don't know which one will 
prosper or which one will grow to something big and yeah so that's uh, the encouragement that i had for today or the conversation that we have for today if there's anything else you want to add to this conversation be sure to write it down in the comment section and i thank you for joining me in today's conversation of faith thank you for joining me until we see each other next week goodbye and god bless you